Hello and good evening to Tuesday night Bible reading. This is Brother Dario coming to you again. And we're so excited to continue our reading through the Word of God. And as always, before we get started in our reading, it is so important that we take our time to pray and that we ask God to reveal to us the Word as we begin to read. But before we get started, let us all bow our heads and let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you, God, for this day, Lord. We thank you, God, for everything that you have done for us. Lord, we ask that as we open up your word, that you open up our eyes to your glorious wonders that you have given us, Lord, through your word. Lord, we ask that as we begin to read this word tonight, that you would help us to apply it into our lives. And so that when we go away from this reading, we are not the same than when we started. Lord, we thank you for your blessings and we thank you for all that you're going to do. And we give you the praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right. So today we are reading for April 13th, 2021. And so we are so excited to continue on. We're getting ready to be close to halfway done to the year. And so this is really exciting to be continuing on in our reading program for this year. And again, this Tuesday night reading is meant to be more of a supplement to your current reading time. And so we hope to use this Bible reading as a way to help facilitate more reading on your own at home. All right, before we continue, as we continue on, I normally like to go over a tip or a way that has always helped me with my Bible reading. And so the one that I want to talk about today is actually a Bible reading accountability program. Now, I've talked about this many times in that it is super important that we have an accountability when we read the word. One way is using programs that have um, that have that di that will di that will cut the Bible reading into smaller digest digestible re um, reading portions each day of the year. The one that we are currently using is the bread program that is offered through the United Pentecostal Church International. Um, these are what you see on your screen are two different pamphlets that have been used. Um, the one that you see that is the 2010 is one that I've used multiple times and um, not just in 2010, but I used this for my Bible reading in 2015 and then in 2018. And currently we're using the one from for 2021. And, and so they're pretty much the same. There are some differences in some Bible reading accountability programs. Some will go through chronological order and some will go through book order and some will do what we're doing, which is doing a portion from the old and a portion from the new. And so personally, I like doing a portion of old and new so that our Bible reading is a little bit more exciting and we're able to be a part and enjoy what we're doing. And with that being said, we're going to get ready to go into our reading. And as always, we're going to be diving into the word. And for this Bible reading, as well as for the other ones, we are using the New King James Version. And this is so that it is easier to digest in our reading. And so we're getting ready to get started. So here is our pamphlet as shown in our, exam, um, in our example for our tip. So this is the current um, pamphlet that we're using for our Bible reading. So as we open it up, we are currently going to be reading for April the 13th, 2021, which is 1 Samuel chapter 22 through chapter 24, and we're going to jump into the book of Luke, chapter 1, verses 1 through 31. All right, so we are going to get started on 1 Samuel, chapter 22. Okay, here we go. David therefore departed from there and escaped to the cave of Adullam. So when his brothers and all his father's house heard it, they went down there to him. And everyone who was in distress, everyone who was in debt, and everyone who was 
discontented gathered to him. So he became captain over them, and there were about 400 men with him. Then David went from there to Mizpah of Moab, and he said to the king of Moab, Please let my father and mother come here with you till I know what God will do for me. So he brought them before the king of Moab, and they dwelt with him all the time that David was in the stronghold. Now the prophet Gad said to David, do not stay in the stronghold, depart and go to the land of Judah. So David departed and went into the land, into the forest of Hereth. When Saul heard that David and the men who were with him had been discovered, now Saul was staying in, Gib in Gibeah under the terrorist tree in Ramah with his spear in his hand and all his servants standing about him. Then Saul said to his servants who stood with him, Hear now, you Benjamites, will the son of Jesse give every one of you fields and vineyards and make you all captains of thousands and captains of hundreds? All of you have conspired against me, and there is no one who reveals to me that my son has made a covenant with the son of Jesse. And there is no one of you who is sorry for me or reveals to me that my son has stirred up my servant against me to lie in wait as it is this day. Then answered Doeg the Edomite, who was set over the servants of Saul, and said, I saw the son of Jesse going to Nob, to Ahimelech, the son of Hitub. And, the, and he inquired of the Lord for him, gave him provisions, and gave him the sword of Goliath, the Philistine. So the king called for Ahimelech, the priest, the son of Ahitub, and all his father's house, the priests who were in Nob, and they all came to the king. And Saul said, Here now, son of Ahitub. He answered, Here I am, my lord. Then Saul said to him, Why have you conspired against me, you and the son of Jesse, in that you have given him bread and a sword, and have inquired of God for him, that he should rise against me to lie in wait as it is this day? So Ahimelech answered the king and said, Who and who among all your servants is as faithful as David? Who is, the, who is the king's son-in-law? Who goes at your bidding? And who is honorable in your house? Did I then begin to inquire of God for him? Far be it from me. Let not the king impute anything to his servant or any in the house of my father. For your servant knew nothing of all this, little or much. And the king said, you shall surely die, Ahimelech, you and all your, all your father's house. Then the king said to the guards who stood about him, turn and kill the priests of the Lord, because their hand is also with David. And because they knew he fled and did not tell it to me, but the servants of the king would not lift their hands to strike the priests of the Lord. And the king said to Doeg, you turn and kill the priest. So Doeg the Edomite turned and struck the priest and killed on that day 85 men who wore a linen ephod. Also Nob, the city of the priest, he struck with the edge of the sword, both men and women, children and nursing infants, oxen and donkeys and sheep with the edge of the sword. Now one of the sons of Ahimelech, the son of Ahitab, named Abitatar, Abitatar, escaped and fled after David. And Abitatar told David that Saul had killed the Lord's priest. So David said to Abitatar, I knew that day when Doeg the Edomite was there that he would surely tell Saul, I have caused the death of all the persons of your father's house. Stay with me, do not fear, for he who seeks my life seeks your life, but with me 
you shall be safe. All right. Chapter 23 of 1 Samuel. Then they told David, saying, Look, the Philistines are fighting against Kelilah, and they are robbing the threshing floors. Therefore, David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go and attack these Philistines? And the Lord said to David, Go and attack the Philistines and save Kelilah. But David's men said to him, Look, we are afraid here in Judah. How much more than if we go to Kelilah against the armies of the Philistines? Then David inquired of the Lord once again. And the Lord answered him and said, Arise. Go down to Kelilah, for I will deliver the Philistines into your hand. And David and his men went to Kelilah and fought with the Philistines, struck them with a mighty blow, and took away their livestock. So David saved the inhabitants of Kelilah. Now it happened when Abinatar, the son of Ahimelech, fled to David at Kelilah, that he went down with an ephod in his hand. And Saul was told that David had gone to Kelilah. So Saul said, God had de has delivered him into my hand, for he has shut himself in, in by entering a town that has gates and bars. Then Saul called all the people together for war to go down to Kelilah to besiege David and his men. And when David knew that Saul plotted evil against him, he said to Abinatar the priest, bring the ephod here. Then David said, O Lord God of Israel, your servant has certainly heard that Saul seeks to come to Kelilah to destroy the city for my sake. Will the men of Kelilah deliver me into his hands? Will Saul come down as your servant has heard? O God of Israel, I pray, tell your servant. And the Lord said, he will come down. Then David said, will the men of Kelilah deliver me and my men into the hand of Saul? And the Lord said, they will deliver you. So David and his men, about 600, arose and departed from Kelilah and went wherever they could go. Then it was told Saul that David had escaped from Kelilah so he halted the expedition. And David stayed in strongholds in the wilderness and remained in the mountains of the wilderness of Ziph. Saul sought him every day, but God did not deliver him into his hand. So David saw that Saul had come out to seek his life, and David was in the wilderness of Ziph in a forest. Then Jonathan, Saul's son, arose and went to David in the woods and strengthen his hand in God. And he said to him, do not fear, for the hand of Saul, my father, shall not find you. You shall be king over Israel, and I shall be next to you. Even my father Saul knows that. So the two of them made a covenant before the Lord. And David stayed in the woods, and Jonathan went to his own house. Then the Ziphites came up to Saul at Gibeah, saying, Is David not hiding with us in strongholds in the woods, in the hills of Ahichia, which is on the south of Jeshimon? Now therefore, O king, come down according to all the desires of your soul to come down, and our part shall be delivered, and our part shall be delivered to him into the king's hand. And Saul said, Blessed are you of the Lord, for you have compassion on me. Please go and find out for sure and see the place where his hideout is and who has seen him there. For I am told he is very crafty. See, therefore, and take knowledge of all the lurking places where he hides and come back to me with certainty and I will go with you and it shall be if he is in the land that I will search for him throughout all the clans of Judah. So they arose and went to Ziph before Saul. But David and his men were in the wilderness of 
Maon in the plain of the south of Jeshimon. When Saul and his men went to seek him, they told David. Therefore he went down to the rock and stayed in the wilderness of Maon. And when Saul heard that, he pursued David in the wilderness of Maon. Then Saul went on one side of the mountain and David and his men on the other side of the mountain. So David made haste to get away from Saul for Saul and his men were encircling David and his men to take them. But a messenger came to Saul saying, hurry and come for the Philistines have invaded the land. Therefore Saul returned from pursuing David and went against the Philistines. So they called that place the Rock of Escape. Then David went up from there and dwelt in the stronghold at the strongholds at En Gidai. All right, continuing on. Move up my Bible up a little bit more. There we go. So we can see it. All right. First Samuel chapter 24. Now it happened when Saul had returned from following the Philistines that it was told him, saying, Take note, David is in the wilderness of En Gidai. Then Saul took 3,000 chosen men from all Israel and went to seek David and his men on the rocks of the wild goats. So he came to the sheepfolds by the road where there was a cave. And Saul went in to attend to his needs. David and his men were staying in the recesses of the cave. Then the men of David said to him, This is the day which the Lord said to you, Behold, I will deliver your enemy into your hand, that you may do to him as it seemed good to you. And David arose and secretly cut off a corner of Saul's robe, now it happened afterwards, afterward that David's heart troubled him because he had cut Saul's robe. And he said to his men, the Lord forbade that I should do this thing to my master, the Lord's anointed, to stretch out my hand against him, seeing he is the anointed of the Lord. So David restrained his servants with these words and did not allow them to rise up to rise against Saul. And Saul got up from the cave and went on his way. David also arose afterwards and went out of the cave and called out to Saul saying, my Lord, the king. And when Saul looked behind him, David stooped to his face with his face to the earth and bowed down. And David said to Saul, why do you listen to the, the words of men who say, indeed, David seeks your harm. Look, this day your eyes have seen that the Lord delivered you today into my hand in the cave, and someone urged me to kill you, but my eyes spared you. And I said, I will not stretch out my hand against my Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed. Moreover, my father, see, yes, see the corner of your robe in my hand. For in that I cut off the corner of your robe and did not kill you. Know and see that there is neither evil nor rebellion in my hand. And I have not sinned against you, yet you hunt my life to take it. Let the Lord judge between you and me. And let the Lord avenge me on you, but my hand shall not be against you. As the proverb of the ancient says, wickedness proceeds from the wicked, but my hand shall not be against you. After whom has the king of Israel come out? Whom do you pursue? A dead dog? A flea? Therefore, let the Lord be, ju let the Lord be judge and judge between you and me and see and plead my case and deliver me out of your hand. So it was when David had finished speaking these words to Saul that Saul said, Is this your voice, my son David? And Saul lifted up his voice and wept. Then he said to David, You are more righteous than I, for you have rewarded me with good 
whereas I have rewarded you with evil. And you have shown this day how you have dealt with dealt well with me. For when the Lord delivered me into your hand, you did not kill me. For if a man finds his enemy, will he let him get away safely? Therefore, may the Lord reward you with good for what you have done to me this day. And now I know indeed that you shall surely be king and that the kingdom of Israel shall be established in your hand. Therefore, swear now for me by the Lord that you will not cut off my descendants after me and that you will not destroy my name from my father's house. All right. That was chapter 24 of First Samuel. At this time, we are going to move on to the book of Luke in the New Testament, chapter 12. And we're going to read verses 1 all the way to verse 31. All right. Luke chapter 12, verse 1. In the meantime, when an innumerable multitude of people had gathered together so that they trampled one another, he began to say to his disciples, first of all, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy, for there is nothing covered that will not be revealed, nor hidden that will not be known. Therefore, whatever you have spoken in the dark will be heard in the light, and what you have spoken in the ear in the inner rooms will be proclaimed on the housetops. And I say to you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. But I will show you whom you should fear. Fear him who, after he has killed has power to cast into hell. Yes, I say to you, fear him. Are not five sparrows sold for two copper coins? And not one of them is forgotten before God. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore, you are, mo are of more value than many sparrows. Also, I say to you, whoever confesses me before men, him, the Son of Man, also will confess before the angels of God. But he who denies me before men will be denied before the angels of God. And anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man, it will be forgiven him. But to him who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven. Now, when they bring you to the synagogues and magistrates and authorities, do not worry about how or what you should answer or what you should say, for the Holy Spirit will teach you in that very hour what you ought to say. Then one, of, then one from the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. But he said to him, man, who made me a judge or an arbiter over you? And he said unto them, he said to them, take heed and beware of covetousness. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of things he possess. Then he spoke a parable to them saying, the ground of a certain rich man yielded plentiful. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, since I have no room to store my crops? So he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there I will store all my crops and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul will be required of you. Then whose will those things be which you have provided? So is he 
who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. Then his, then he said to his disciples, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you, what you will eat, nor about the body, what, uh, what you will put on. Life is more than food, and the body is more than clothing. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which have neither storehouse nor barn, and God feeds them. Or how much more value are you than the birds? And which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature? If you then are not able to do the least, why are you anxious for the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. Neither, they neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothed the grass, which today is in the field and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you? O oh, you of little faith, and do you and do and do not seek what you should eat or what you should drink, nor have an anxious mind. For all these things the nations of the world seek after, and your father knows that you need these things. But seek first, but seek the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added to you. All right. All right. That is Luke chapter 12, verses 1 to 31. Okay. So we have completed our Bible reading for today. This has been really wonderful, continuing to read in our Bible, especially getting closer and closer to the halfway point of this year's Bible reading. It is exciting to see what we have learned in God's word. And so we hope that you enjoyed this. Uh, be sure to share this with, uh, with your friends. Also be sure to like and subscribe to um, Christ Alive Community Apostolic Church. And, um, and we hope to see you next week as we continue to read the Bible throughout the year of 2021. You guys have a wonderful day. Goodbye.